Hey everyone and welcome to What's Up Thursday with the 11 City Tour. I'm going to give you a little bit of a bio piece on myself, so here we go. So my name is Michael Booth, I am 29 years old, I live in Perth, Western Australia and I am a professional stand-up paddler. I'm also a coach with Booth Training, I have a paddle brand called MB Paddles, I'm a brand um, ambassador and I just try and, go, try and do every day the best I can and I try and help as many people as I can. What has been the longest distance I've paddled? I think we paddled about 75 kilometers one day. We did a paddle which is 220 kilometers from Buston to Perth, which is southwest WA. And I think one of the days, yeah, we paddled about 75 kilometers, which was on a charity paddle for Ocean Heroes Australia. It was a really cool experience and we got to catch amazing downwind sort of the whole way throughout the day, had a little bit of a break halfway and, and then kept going. So. Uh, it was a really cool experience. I'd have to say Molokai has always been a, a really tough test for me. Um, I'm not as good at, I say, three to four hour racing as I am at one hour or 45 minute to one and a half hour racing. So that's always been a challenge for me because mainly that I don't have the time to prepare for these events properly because when, when we start our season, when we start with Carolina in April, trying to paddle through um, May and June, doing the Euro Tour as well, trying to win that, uh, which I've been lucky enough to win three times, and then spending that next month um, trying to prepare for Molokai. You just don't get the training and because you're constantly on the road, you're constantly traveling. So that's probably been the hardest route for me to paddle, um, just because I haven't been able to prepare properly for it. Um, and you're constantly making mistakes in that race, which I have, like not planning for the heat, not drinking enough water, um, not spending enough time on my board and not paddling enough. So when you're doing these ultra distance races, make sure you get the work done, you work with the coach and you make yourself accountable because when it comes race day, you're not going to be disappointed. Paddling gives me so much. Um, it's it's lucky enough to be, that it's my livelihood at the moment. Um, I'm able to live out my passion every single day. I'm able to go out and paddle. I'm able to go out to help other people um, when I'm coaching them and, and helping them achieve their goals. And also is really good for my health and well-being, which I've noticed, especially in this COVID-19 crisis, being out to get out in the water, go for a paddle, it just clears my mind, makes me um, want to set new goals and, and push myself further, even though my whole life is turned upside down at the moment. It also gives me the opportunity to meet so many great people around the world. The community of stand-up paddling is just incredible. There's so many great people out there that um, just want to give everything to the sport and um, I think we're very, very lucky to be a part of paddling in general. Um, the first the first paddling moment that I'll always remember in my paddling career will probably be the 2016 ISA world title that I won in Fiji in the distance race. At the time, it probably didn't mean as much to me. Um, for whatever reason, it just I was new to the sport. It, it was sort of like a, a race that was really confusing, hard logistically. Um, it was always the schedule was always getting thrown around different places and it didn't really feel like a world title at the time. But now looking back to that 2016 world title in Fiji, uh, I get such a, a good feeling about it because I know that was my first world title. And sort of, it's, it, you know, really, it's not like you really get anything out of winning a world title. It might be just like a little thing on your shoulder and you're like, yep, I've, I've done that. That's awesome. But um, looking back now, sort of four years on, it, it does mean a lot to me and it was a really tough race. It, I flew in, I actually raced the weekend before, then flew over race on the Wednesday and then race on the Saturday as well because um, I was trying to make money either side of those other two events and then trying to go over to Fiji and win that title and it was just a, such a hot day. There was an incredible field of athletes there. Um, I, I think I dehydrated myself so much but I pushed so hard to win towards the final end of that race and I think it took me four hours to do my drug test after the race and I just knew I give I gave absolutely everything on that day and yeah, it just it means a lot to me looking back on it now. At the right now I think my favourite place for paddling is actually southwest WA. Um, there's so many different places to paddle, to surf, to, to do downwinds, to do flat water paddles, to just experience so much um, rawness of nature. It's just an incredible place and I really enjoy going down there and just going out paddling by myself, listening to audiobooks, listening to music or just going out and just experiencing the water down there and sort of feeling a little bit more isolated and not feeling like there's so many um, things around and not, not as many distractions. So that's probably my favourite place to paddle at the moment. 
I haven't competed in the 11 City Tour just yet. It's definitely one on my bucket list, but at the moment it's really hard to fit into the, the season calendar normally because of um, so many events going on throughout the year and you've sort of got to really try and focus on uh, those different goals at different times. I know there's still many of the shorter races that I'd still like to win. Uh, there's a few things I've still got to prove myself in, but the 11 City Tour is something that I'll definitely do at some stage. Um, it could even happen in 2020 if it's one of the only races that we actually get to do. So it's it's a it's a weird one for me. I definitely will go at some stage, but probably a little bit later on when I'm just picking and choosing events and I'm, I'm just going to participate in the the general community of SUP and maybe when I'm a little bit less uh, focused on winning so much and, and more focused on doing the joy for, of it. Um, there's just, yeah, there's so many events out there still that I want to participate in and obviously if I'm trying to to make a living, I've got to make sure that I'm getting to those those big events where the biggest guys are out, where the, the most prize money is, and um, they're the events where I'm going to create my legacy, and I want to be able to do that first, and then I'll move into those ultra-distance events, because what I find with ultra-distance events, you can do them when you're older, if you look into like a lot of studies and what looking at a lot of what a lot of other athletes have done, as they got to through to like 30 to 40, um, the distance racing becomes more um, their strength, and that's something I'm going to look forward to doing um, once I hit 30, which is only next year. But, um, yeah, just going to keep focusing on what I'm doing at the moment, keep trying to win world titles, um, Euro Tour titles, uh, APP World Tour, I haven't won that one yet. So there's so many things I still want to be able to do in this sport, and um, 11 City is definitely one of them. Peace. Thanks.